ties. I want to show you something about that. So, um, I want to show you how, uh, because I want to start talking about the camber before we go into the top. I want to start, start talking about the camber. Uh, as you saw, those cars use um, high, high negative, high values of negative camber. They go down to minus 0.3.5, easy. Pretty much all the cars do that. Uh, some cars use even more, minus 4.5. 1, 2, they don't go much over that, but they are pretty much in the in the ballpark of minus point, uh, four, 4 degrees of negative camber. So, why is that, first of all? Well, first of all, all modern radial tires uh, need uh, camber. Uh, they have it also in their design. Uh, they need more camber because this gives more grip like that and more importantly it permits the tire to have while turning uh, a surface temperature a surface heat uh, that dissipates and goes around all the footprint of the tire and not just the outside why is this happening so let's go and have a look on what is going on so let's uh, see here Let's go here for a minute and uh, let me also do I want to go into the uh, web browser and show you some some stuff so I don't know even if I'm, I'm gonna be able to do it all right here we are okay so Let's start here. And uh, go back. All right. Okay. So let's see the tires from the top. As I told you, we have inner, outside, and uh, inner, medium, and, and outside. Okay. You can see that everybody I guess right so these are oops these are the tires so what happens when when you go into the straight straight line straight line usually you have practically the inner part of the tire touching a little bit of the mid so this is where the big heat is is getting, you know, uh, is created. Uh, obviously, the heat dissipates and goes from the inner to the mid and to the outer to the inside of the tire and so on. But mainly, it is created on uh, on the inner because you have so much negative camber. Now, let me check if I have. Uh, where did I put the extra stuff? Let me check this for a minute. All right, yeah. So the tire is like this. If you look the tire from dead on, you know, from, from the front of the car. So let's say this is the tire if you look at it from the front of the car. It has lots of negative camber, so you only have the inner part of the tire touching. But when you go into a turn, all right, when you go into a turn, the tire flexes. And this happens. This is what happens when you go into a turn. So let me get, off, get rid of the other one. So the tire flexes and you have the whole footprint touching and giving the biggest uh, footprint area of, of the tire. Uh, and this is what you need. If you didn't have um, negative camper, then the situation would have been something like that, you know, no negative camper, so something like that, which means only the outside of the tire would touch uh, the asphalt and would, you know, have friction and would generate heat and you wouldn't have the whole uh, footprint of the tire. 
So what you need, you need lots of negative camber, like that. So with negative camber, the tire flexes, and then you have the whole footprint. And not only that, but you also start having a situation in the temperature like that. This is what happens when you are on the turf, right? Okay. So this is what happens normally, and what you should do, uh, you should uh, go for. How much camber? How much negative cover? A lot. Those cars, as we said, uh, they need around uh, at least minus points, uh, at least three degrees negative camber. This is what the tire asks. Uh, not all tires are created equal. Uh, some tires need less. Some tires need even more. Uh, I remember, for example, depends also, and this is something that we're about to show you in a minute, it really depends also on uh, the, uh, the suspension geometry. So let's show you what happens with the suspension geometry. So this is, this is a great website uh, that I uh, usually go into when I want to visualize something fast enough and then don't want to go into uh, my editors or, you know, fire up a set of course with the uh, developer uh, over uh, imprinting graphics that we have and everything. So this is a great uh, website. It is called uh, www.racingaspirations.com. I highly recommend it. The guy that ran it, uh, uh, his name is uh, Hugh Davies. Great guy. Uh, so again, highly recommended. You can find the link on the description of the live stream. Uh, so go there, it has a lot of stuff to play with and it's really really cool. So what we can do here, first of all this thing is interactive and this is a normal double wishbone suspension that you can see from the front. So as you can see uh, we have here uh, lots of uh, negative camber, all right? Uh, let's uh, try to put even some more, we can do that, you see? Okay, so four degrees of negative camber, you can see it here, 4.3 actually, okay, 4, 4.1, 4.1 degrees of negative camber. So what happens when the the car rolls into a turn? So you go into a turn, you obviously have some body roll, okay, so what happens in that situation? This is what happens, so the car rolls, you see, I will exaggerate a little bit now so that you can see it easily, and when the car rolls, the negative the suspension loses negative camber you can see the tire goes practically vertical right so now we have obviously an excessive roll because you can see here down here sassy's roll in blue you see zero degrees if i push it like this it's like five degrees of sassy's roll this is a lot of roll this is i won't say Citroen, you know, rolling, <laughs> body roll, but it is certainly uh, street cars body roll. And you already see that we have much less negative camber here on the outside. Um, so let's go back to around, so let's, let's go back to no body roll. We have 4.1 negative uh, camber, so we start turning. And we have around 1 degree, 1.5 degree of sausage roll, body roll, which is pretty much what is happening in, in GT3. And you can see that we have already lost, uh, so let me, let me unpin this so I can keep it there, 1. Uh, 1.4 sausage roll here, degrees, 1.4, and we've lost more than half degree of negative camber. So, uh, what, what that means? It means that not only the tire flexes, and if you don't have negative camber, you won't have the correct uh, and the, the widest footprint area. But also, when the car is rolling, the suspension geometry uh, is making the tire to lose negative camber. So you need as much static camber as possible uh, to to have uh, you know the the correct negative camber well when you when you are turning. 
Some cars are better at that, for example, uh, Ferrari or the, uh, the Mercedes. The Mercedes loses less negative camber where the, when, the body, uh, when it has body roll. Some cars are worse at that. For example, the Audi and the Lamborghini need a lot of negative camber because when the chassis rolls, they lose also a lot of camber, uh, dynamic camber. Uh, and this is easily, uh, you, we can easily see that what happens uh, if we change here uh, the suspension geometry. So why this happens? For example, if I change the suspension geometry here and do something like this, okay? So now we still have 4.1 uh, negative num uh, camber. I will go again, oops, sorry about that. I'll go again to 1.4. And this time we've lost only uh, 0.2 degrees of camber just by changing the suspension geometry. Uh, back again, now we will do the opposite. So we'll go down like this, okay? All right. And pin this and we'll go again to 1.4 roll, chassis roll. And this time we've lost 1.2 degrees of negative camber. So this means, as you can see, that different suspension geometry uh, creates different characteristics in the alignment. And we, op we are only looking at this in two dimensions, only camber. Uh, in reality, the suspension geometry has three dimensions because you have the, you know, the arms in the 3D space. And this means that uh, you change um, the camber, you change the toe, uh, toe in. Uh, you might know the caster doesn't change, but you know you change all the other um, alignment figures that are not even possible to, to change on the setup, but they are simulated uh, in the simulation, like ping, king ping inclination, uh, scrub radius, all that stuff, and all that stuff uh, influences the handling. Uh, the the tire uh, how the tire sits on the asphalt and all that stuff so um, what else right for example Macpherson geometry Macpherson geometry is famous for losing a lot of camber so you really need a lot of negative camber which car has uh, McPherson geometry, the old uh, Porsche 9, 911. Uh, you need tones and tones of uh, front negative cover, like, uh, for example, the Porsche Cup cars for the sprint racers run as much as minus six degrees of negative camber. Six degrees of negative camber. I'm not talking simulation here, I'm talking the real cars. The real cars are like that, it's unbelievable. You, you look at them and you're like, oh, wh what's broken? And they do that because they need to, you know, maintain as much negative camber as possible and because the tires also need it. So, yeah, don't, don't be afraid to use a lot of negative camber. So this is what negative camber does uh, to you. So how do you understand uh, how to use negative camber uh, inside the, uh, the simulation? Uh, right, so let's have a look at this. For a minute, sorry about that. And let's go back to the game. So, as you saw now, um, the let, let me just check if you guys are looking again at the game properly. Yes, I think so. Okay. So, as you saw, uh, when you have completed uh, four or five laps. You go back into the last readings, you also have the OMI temperature readings. OMI means outer, mid, inside. Uh, so these are the temperature readings on each of the three divisions of, of the tire. And uh, they can uh, let you know more or less what is happening. So keep in mind this. Uh, I know that some of you might say, well, in that simulator we have, we, sh we should have uh, 10 degrees or 50 degrees, even in Assetto Corsa 1, for example, it was different, or in Air Factor, or in iRacing, or whatever. 
Uh, so what does that mean? Are those uh, wrong and uh, Sotokorsa is right or vice versa? Is Sotokorsa uh, wrong and the others are right? No, it doesn't mean anything because it depends where you get your readings from. Uh, the readings that you have here are all into the um, at least three millimeters depth, so they are core readings. And core um, core temperature is dissipated, and the the all the temperature is more similar to one another. Okay, so in this example here for Assetto Corsa competition, at least uh, you want to have a difference of six to eight degrees this is where you want to be six to eight degrees okay a little bit more at the front a little bit less at the rear something like that six to eight degrees it will also depend a lot of the track because if you have a circuit where you have long bends then lots of temperature is going to be uh, you know created from the tires if you have a circuit that is stop and go with short secants then less temperature will be created so you need different readings um, but you want you want around six to eight degrees difference from outer, from outside temperature to the inner uh, temperature, and you want your mid temperature to be in between the two extremes, obviously, because if it is too much, then you have the tires way too much pressure on the tires. If it is too low, then you have uh, too low pressure on the tires, and so on. So. Um, if you have four, three degrees temperature, then you're probably using way too low uh, negative camber. If you have more than 10 degrees uh, difference, then you're probably using uh, way too much negative camber. This is more or less the ballmark that you want to, to stay.